Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will talk about user registration API. Uh, the API is very simple. The primary purpose of it is to provide uh, a way for users to register. Typically, it happens when there is a registration form that a user fills out in your application, and then something happens uh, for the user record to be created. And what, what, what happens is the API to register a user is invoked. This API is available in multiple formats. We have a number of SDKs for Android, for iOS, for JavaScript, for Flutter, for .NET, and of course there is Codeless Plus, there is REST API that you can use from uh, any system that we don't have an SDK for. Uh, since it would be a, a, quite an effort and I would be repeating myself if, if I were to go over these APIs for each individual platform, Instead, I will be demonstrating how that API works in Codeless. And this applies to all other lectures that we have in this series where we talk about APIs. It's all going to be Codeless for, for a number of reasons. Codeless makes it very visual. We can actually see that API on the screen. Uh, and uh, it works exactly the same as the implementation of that API in all the libraries. So any arguments that you would be passing in Codeless and the actual functionality of the API is going to be exactly the same as with all other SDKs. Plus, we don't really give, uh, you know, make one language, you know, more important than others. It's going to Codeless neutralizes it all. So here in uh, uh, our table, in the users table in this application, uh, we do have a couple of columns. So there is email, which is identity, and you know that because there's, uh, there's this light blue background. There is name, and uh, whenever we register a user, there's also going to be password. All other properties are also possible to pass in whenever you register a user. And if you think about the registration forms that exist out there in different applications, they could sometimes could be very complex, which is probably not the best experience, experience but still, it is possible. The, the most important thing to remember when you work with the registration API is that the names of your columns are going to be important because names of the columns in the user's table, they will correspond to the actual user properties that you specify whenever you use the registration API or when you work with backend list database in general. But for now, let's focus on the user registration API. So remember, uh, just once I switch to Codeless, something to remember is that the names of the columns are email, name and we have password. So knowing that, let's switch to Codeless and see how uh, user registration API works. For Codeless, we will use UI Builder, again, simply because it makes it more visual experience. We can kind of see how that API actually works visually. Uh, let's create a new page and uh, we will call it user registration. And on this page, we can drag a button that a user will click. And uh, when the button is clicked, uh, the, the API will be invoked. So in here in the toolbox, like a button, it's going to be in the section called form. So here's a button, drag it out here and uh, click the button. We can change the label to register user. And then when you select the button, you will see this little uh, kind of a tooltip or button bar that uh, uh, appears. And the very first icon is going to look like a jigsaw puzzle. Click that icon and that switches to the Codeless editor. Uh, on the uh, right-hand side, one of the events will say on-click event. Click the green button. And in here, we will have uh, our Codeless editor. So the user registration API is available as a Codeless block that appears in the back list section in the category that says Users API. If you click this category, you'll see a bunch of different blocks. Every single one of them corresponds to some API. The one that we uh, want to review in this video will say Register Users. So drag it out here and uh, there we have it. So this Register User block really represents the User Registration API. Now, by default, it will have these two properties, email and password. And something to remember, and if you were to rem remember one thing from this video, is the, the properties that you specify here 
they must match the column names in the user's table. As we said that we care about three properties now, name, email, and password. So if you were to add additional properties to your registry user call, you would need to do the following. So you click this gear icon and uh, you will see this interface. And then this block can be used to add additional properties to the user registration API call. And to do this, just drag it out into this properties area and give it a name. So the, the, the actual name of the property will be name. And again, it must match the name of the column from the user's table. So at this point, all of these properties, they match the name of the columns. And now we can provide the values that will be used by the user registration API call. So here I will type in text to find the text block and then connect it to name and then select a new copy and paste to replicate it. And then at this point, we can provide the actual values for the user registration. In this video, uh, I will use just the hard coded values. Of course, in a more realistic scenario, there would be a registration form where the user types in the values and then through data binding, we get the values and send it to the API. That would make it more complicated. And the goal of this video and in this uh, course is to focus on user management. So when it, and not so much in the UI builder. Uh, of course, there's going to be a separate course in the UI builder where we talk about, and actually there are courses already where we talk about how to create those forms, how to use data binding, how to wire in the API. Here, the focus in is just on this API. So now we can register an actual user. And then the user that we will register is, since we're dealing with superheroes, is going to be Thor. We don't have that one yet. So the email will be Thor at marvel.com. And uh, the, the password, let's make it heavy hammer. All right, so that's it. The, the page is ready. The API is there. We can actually run the page and see that API in action. So run the page. And if you open the inspect window in here on the network tab, we can actually see those APIs with the, uh, in action where the page is communicating with the server using the API that is in that block. So if we click register user, you see this register line, that's our API call. So if we go into the headers, that's all the details that really uh, are uh, embedded in that block and the block makes that happen. So this is the URL where the request goes out to. In the payload, this is the information that was sent to the server. And in the preview, you can actually see the response that we got back from the server. So the response is actually a JSON object. Here's, you know, this long JSON string. This is kind of a more uh, beautified version of, of that response. But what we have here is the actual backendless user object that is returned from that API. So uh, as we can see in here, the block itself takes the parameters, sends the request out, what you get back is the actual user object that has all the properties of that user. So in, in, in case of Codeless, if you want to get a hold of that actual user object, just select this checkbox. And then you see now this block returns a value. You can take this value and do whatever with it in Codeless. In our case, we don't really care about it. So we'll leave it as this. So since this API was fired off and the user is created, if we go back to the back end, you'll see that now we have a user record for Thor uh, with the email address name and well, the password we cannot see, but the password that we provided in the codeless uh, call. At this point, the user is created and user can log in into the application to take uh, advantage of all the functionality that the application provides. It's simple as that. I do hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching this video and as always, happy codeless coding.